the ceramics. All right, I'm going to present. All right, so there's two things that we're going to try to accomplish today. Um, we're going to add a foot, and then we're going to start making the design on your plate project. So people who are at home, you have in your Ziploc baggie this tool, this ribbon tool. And people who are here in the classroom, you have ribbon tools here as well. They're in the pocket right over there. So you're going to be using that today to make your foot. That's what's going to be added to the bottom of the pot. And a foot, as we remember from ceramic eggs, is something that elevates your pot, stabilizes your pot, makes it so it doesn't sit heavy looking on the table. It just gives it some lift. And if you look at your plates at home, guaranteed they have a little ring at the bottom. And so that's what we're going to make on your plates today. Now, there are different shapes of plates. And so your shape of foot is going to be dependent on the shape of the plate that you have. People who are at home, your foot is probably going to be a hexagon because your plate shape is a hexagon. That's what I'm going to be showing in the demo. People who are here might have fish-shaped plates or oval-shaped plates or circle-shaped plates. So your foot ring is going to be dependent on your plate shape. So um, the steps for this, and I'm going to show you this in the demo, um, but I'm just going to talk you through it now. Um, so you're going to check and see which stage your, your play is in. And as I was walking around the room before uh, the class started, it seemed like a lot of the plates are still kind of sticky, still kind of plastic. So what's important about that is that you realize what, that they're still too wet because you can't flip these plates out if they're still plastic. So you're going to put it in front of the fan. You're going to use a hair dryer. There should be, I'll make sure if there isn't, but I'll make sure there's two hair dryers over there, two hair dryers so that we can have multiple people using hair dryers. People at home, you're gonna have to check your own clay. If it seems kind of sticky, if you try and lift it up and it's wobbly, you gotta dry it a little bit more. So then once you have your plate and you know that it's leather hard, we're going to use a towel. So that's why I wanted everybody to have a towel today. Um, people who are at home, that was one of the things I asked you to have. We're gonna fold up that towel, we're gonna put it on top of our plate, and we're just gonna go whoop, like that, whoop, flip it over so that it's cushioned. So it's not going to flatten out, it's not going to deflate, and then you're going to be able to take off your plate and take off your plastic. And that's where the foot is going to go. And I'll show you that more closely in the demo. So um, once you have it uh, flipped over, you're going to have to smooth that backside, make it all nice and neat before the foot gets on there. You're going to need a little bit of clay. You're going to roll a coil. And uh, you're going to roll, uh, roll it and flatten out that coil to be about the thickness that you made your, your plate slab. And then we're going to use the ribbon tool to cut. And that ribbon tool is going to make a perfect coil of clay for you to add on for your feet. And I'm going to show you that in the demo so it will make more sense then. Then once that foot is on there, you scored, you slip, you've melded. Um, smooth everything one more time. Carve your initials in the bottom. You can put your hour number if you wish, but you're my only ceramics B class. So just your initials is fine. And then let it sit upside down like this for a little bit. You can't put your foot on there and then flip your pot over onto the foot because the foot is going to be really sticky and plastic. So we need to let that set up a little bit while we do our next steps. So I'm going to show you and talk you through the next steps and I'll, I'll again demo that in a little bit. So the next step you're going to move on to today is starting your paper mix game. And so you're going to be using more than one color in your paper mask designs. So um, you, people who are here, you have six different colors of Engo to pick from. People who are at home, you have two different colors of Van Gogh, two little jars in your Ziploc baggie. Plus, one of your colors is white, because the clay that you have is white. Now, this person isn't going to have any white designs, um, and I'll explain why in a second. But um, basically, you're going to take pieces of clay, and you're, or sorry, pieces of paper, and you're going to stick them down to your paper, uh, to your clay, and then you're going to paint over it with Van Gogh. And the paper is going to mask or hide whatever is underneath it. So if the paper is covering up white clay, and you've painted over it with blue and gold, when you peel that paper off, whatever your design was, is going to be white because it was protecting whatever color is underneath it. So this person did something a little bit different. They painted their whole pot green. Then they made their paper cutouts of these leafy shapes. They stuck those leafy shapes down to the green painted pot, then painted over it with black. And then when they're peeling their leaves away, the leaves are protecting the green that was underneath it. So the cutouts are green and the surrounding area is black. So that's how paper masking works. The paper is going to protect whatever color is underneath it. So um, the first layer 
and for most of you, in most cases, is probably going to be white. Whatever paper pieces you put on today are going to be protecting the white of the clay underneath it. If you don't want any designs that are white, then you can paint your pot with one of your colors of Engo, then put on your first paper pieces once that first layer of Envo is leather hard. And again, I'm going to be demoing that in, uh, in a little bit. So these are the steps. Here's another uh, example of a paper mask pot that has three colors to it. Um, what pieces would you guess were put on first? What color would you guess were put on first? Blue. Um, might have been put on first, but I think that there's one. Um, what the the paper pieces that were are different color than blue? Because blue seems like it was maybe put on a little bit later. White, exactly. So this person would have had it, it would seem white clay. They would have cut out the leaves and put down some leaves on that white clay and then painted over it with light blue. Then they would have put down more leaves to protect the light blue, and then they would have painted over it with the dark blue. So the dark blue, whatever is your last color, is your background color, is whatever is kind of surrounding your designs. So when they peeled off the first layer of leaves, those were protecting the white areas. When they peeled off their second layer of leaves, that was protecting the light blue areas. So it's all about layering uh, with this technique. And so that's what you kind of have to think through as you're coming up with your designs, you're figuring out what pieces go on first, what pieces go on second. So uh, the design that you come up with today can be based on your sketches that you did a few days ago. It can be as simple or as complex as you want. These leaves are not necessarily all that complex. And honestly, um, when you're cutting out your designs, you can layer two or three pieces of paper together and cut them out simultaneously so you're getting multiple pieces out of one cut. You can use a craft knife or an exacto blade to do your cutting if you want to be really delicate and detailed. But just a simple scissor will work as well. When you're placing your paper pieces on, um, you can do it symmetrically. And I would say this design up on the screen is, is fairly symmetrical. It's physically the same on all sides. But if you want, you could also do an asymmetrical design where there is visual balance, like there's something interesting here, counterbalance with something interesting here, but they're not physically the same on both sides. That would be asymmetrical balance. And on this next screen, you can kind of see that. So the, the snowflake, by the way, if anybody does a snowflake for their design, I would encourage you not to do a snowflake for your design. Why don't you come up with something a little bit more unique than a snowflake? Um, but this is a good example of a symmetrical design. It's the same on all sides, physically the same. The flowers are a good example of asymmetrical. It is set off to one side. And the, the more elaborate design on the one side is counterbalanced by that glowing blue and go on the other side. So it is asymmetrically balanced, but it still is visually interesting on both sides. <clears throat> Incidentally, this pot on the screen is another way that you could get three colors out of your design. So I want you to try and have three colors in your design. So this was just one layer of paper. They just laid down all these little kind of broken glass kind of triangle pieces of paper stuck in that height. And then they created a blend between two colors of Engo, almost like an uh, um, ombre kind of fade between the yellow and the red, um, and then they, so there's multiple colors within um, that one layer that they painted on. So um, you're gonna be cutting out some paper pieces today and uh, just keep them all in a safe spot as you're cutting them out. Then you're gonna be sticking them down to the paper, make sure that they're stuck down really tight. Uh, choose your end gobe, and if you don't remember, end gobes are over here in these buckets. There's a scoop in each one, scoop it, put it in a, a little cup, and um, you may need to thin it down a little bit. Some of these engobes are probably kind of thick. People at home, when you open up your jar of engobe, you may need to thin out your engobe a little bit too. Um, then once your paper pieces are on there, paint one layer of engobe over the top and do not peel off your paper today. You're gonna be tempted to peel it off and see how it looks, but you're gonna be doing more than one layer and certainly probably things are gonna be too wet for you to peel off today anyway. So don't peel anything today. Those pieces need to stay on until Monday or back. Um, and people at home, you're going to do this today, and you're going to keep this wrapped up till Monday as well. You're not going to work with clay tomorrow either. So your assignment for today is to take two photos. You're submitting two photos to Schoology today. One is a photo of your foot on your plate, and one is a photo of the start of your paper masked design. So it should be your paper pieces with one layer of Envo over the top. 
And that's what I want to see today by 3 p.m. for your 20 points. So I'm going to demo that now. So I am going to end the show. Um, let's see, Tatiana, can you turn on the lights for me, please? And I'm going to come over to table nine. So people who sit far away, um, just come and stand socially distanced as best you can. There we go. So let me try and position this so that they can see me. Can you guys see though? Back there, you can't. Um, okay, how can I move this a little bit? Um, oh, I know what I can do. You can put it right here. Um, or you can work on a higher surface. Maybe that'll help. Oh, but then the people oh, can't see. Uh, why is life so hard? Um, I don't suppose that helped at all. Can you kind of see, like, if you maybe shift over a little bit? Sorry. Okay. Uh, so, first of all, um, to the foot. So, I have my plate here. And actually, let me kind of show you what stage it's in. When I try and lift it off, I'll lift it with the plastic first. It holds its shape pretty well. It's pretty uh, strong all the way across. So, that's a good sign that it's, um, I would say this is leather hard. Ideally, it would be dry leather hard, which would be a little bit more strong and more firm but um, it's at least strong enough to hold its shape. So I think it's, it's ready for me to move forward. I can't emphasize enough how important it is that your clay really is leather hard, okay? So people at home, get a hairdryer or a fan. People here, set your project in front of the fan, get a hairdryer. If it at, at all is wiggly, when you try and lift it off, don't take it off, leave it on that plate. So um, now I need to make my coil. So I'm gonna get a little additional clay. I think in the instructions I said about a golf ball of clay. Um, people who are here, some of you have a kind of bigger plates, so you might need a little bit more clay. But people at home, your plates are, are really pretty small, so um, you won't need that much clay. So I said to make a coil, so I'm going to make a coil. And people here, you're going to make a coil too, uh, but it's going to be a really fat coil. And then we're gonna use, people who are here, you're gonna be able to use the slab roller. Um, and you're gonna put, if the slab roller was like this, you're gonna put the, the coil like this so it stretches really far this way. Um, people who are at home, you're gonna be stretching that coil. Boy, this is gonna be way more than I need. You're gonna stretch that coil to make it kind of flat. You can also use your rolling pin that I've given you to make it uh, about, the same thickness as this slab. Now this is the magic bit, this is the bit I love. So people at home, you have this ribbon tool, you're gonna to use the round end. Everybody here, you have ribbon tools here. Um, some of them are big and some of them are small. So you can choose what size ribbon tool uh, you wanna use because it will affect the, the size coil that you use or that you make. So if I put this round end and carve through this slab that I've made, it's gonna give me this really nice rounded coil. It's gonna be round on one side, but it's gonna be flat on the other side, which is gonna be really nice because that's gonna be the side that I score and slip to the bottom of my plate. It's this nice strong surface to be able to connect there. So I'm just gonna let this chill for a little bit. And this extra clay, people at home, wedge this back up and put it back in your bag so that you don't end up wasting your clay. So now I do have to score and slip. Um, and I know for some of you, it's been a while since you've had to score and slip. So you need your slip, first of all, that you made your, um, your fortune cookies into. And you need your fork. People at home, you have a plastic fork. People who are here, there's plastic or real forks over there behind blue. And the best place for you to score and slip and put your foot is the place where it's a transition between the flat part of the plate and the sauce rim. So you may just want to map that out first before you much slipping and scoring. So you don't want the foot really small in here because then your, your plate will rock. You don't run it, want it really wide because then um, the plate might not sit on the foot. It might sit on the actual bottom of the pot. So you want it at just that little transition point where your plate stops being flat and starts to angle up. 
Now, I'm a firm believer in working smarter, not harder. So I'm actually scoring and slipping simultaneously. I'm just dipping the fork in the slip and roughing it up and adding my slip all in one go. Now, because I have a hexagon shaped plate, my foot is also gonna be in a hexagon shape. And then uh, my little coil that's here, I'm gonna flip it over so I'm accessing the flat side and I'm gonna score and slip down that flat side of my coil too. And then I'm going to place my foot so that it is attaching, the scored areas should attach, the slipped areas should attach, and where it comes together right there, I'm just gonna rip off the extra. Okay, so that's what it looks like so far. The corners of my hexagon just need to be nudged a little bit so these corners line up with the actual corners of my plate. Okay, and then comes the melding. We're gonna do the melding a little bit differently than we normally would. Usually we would actually like blend some of this clay downward, but this is such a nice shape. We don't wanna wreck that shape. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a, a small sponge and I'm gonna make it into kind of a U shape. And I'm gonna let that U shape smooth both the sides and the top of this coil at the same time. So this might take a couple passes, but I'm just kind of doing a gentle squeeze and I'm smoothing and it's, it's kind of doing the job of melding, but it's also making that coil really nice and neat, really, really smooth. And it's doing a little bit of gentle melding. Okay. So that's what it looks like. And as long as I'm looking at the bottom of my pot, I'm just going to carve my initials into the bottom. And then I'm just going to let it chill like this because it's too sticky to turn over right now. So just going to let that chill right there. Then I need to start thinking about my design. And so here are some examples of the way we did paper masking last trimester, which I know is on a different kind of form. Uh, but it'll at least give you some ideas of what kids have done. And they only had to use one color. And I'm asking you guys to have two colors of engobe, possibly three colors total because of the white of the clay. Um, but here's some different ideas for designs. This was just strips of paper. Actually, this is a lot like what I'm going to do on my plate. I just cut really thin strips of paper. So this was one um, design where there's a lot of areas that are kind of left open. This person did butterflies. And what I really like is that she cut out part of the butterfly, part of the interior of the butterfly. So the design became a lot more complex, which is pretty cool. Um, this person did stars and moons and flowers, really delicate uh, designs. I'm not sure if she had a, uh, an X-Acto knife when she did that, but um, the, so those paper designs would have been put on the, the clay and then black and go painted over it and then they were peeled off. And then this was uh, a little crystal or a rock. And then all these little interior areas were cut out with a craft knife or X-Acto knife. And then when this was put on the, the clay, when the um, crystal was put on the, the clay, blue was painted inside the crystal, black was painted around the crystal. So when you peeled the paper off, the lines were where the paper was, and then the interior is blue, and the exterior is black. So that's pretty elaborate design work, but you certainly could do that. Um, you're gonna have, this is not like final project due today. We're gonna work on this into next week. So you do have the time to do a little bit of, of um, really detailed design work if you wish. So I've just been cutting a bunch of these strips. The strips are what I'm gonna use for my plate design. So I'm gonna flip this over again and I'm gonna keep it on my towel just so it's extra cushioned. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wet this surface just a little bit so my paper has something to stick to. And then I am just going to use my fingers to place the paper on and kind of a, it's a little bit like making it up as I go along kind of pattern. So I wanna mimic and kind of go along with this hexagon shape of my plate. I wanna take into account that there are gonna be more paper pieces added later after I have my first layer of color on here. It's gonna be really important that they're stuck down tight. So I'm trying to actually make a little slip with my fingers and just really make sure that those pieces are stuck down tight. So this design is gonna be um, probably a little bit more symmetrical. It's gonna be kind of like more or less the same on all sides. Maybe it won't be 100% the same, 
but it's going to be more or less the same. And then I should have grabbed my end gobe. I forgot to get that before I came over here. Get that in a moment. So, oopsie. Couple more sides to get on here. People at home, I get, I'm guessing you're maybe not able to see this super well. I'll hold it up when I'm done. Um, I'm just letting my pieces kind of go off the end. You can make them wrap over onto the other side. You can have designs on this back side too, if you want. But what I'm requiring and what you would probably find at your plates at home is that the design is mainly on the inside. So that's what I'm asking of you for sure. If you want to do it on the outside or wrap it around the lip at least, that is totally fine, totally up to you. Okay, so people at home, this is what I've got. So now I'm gonna grab some Engo. And the colors I have are a light green, but actually this light green ends up turning really dark green. Um, there's white, which won't show up all that well because our clay is white. Uh, but you can mix it with things. I have pink, I have blue, I have black, and I have yellow. So I'm going to do blue today, and then maybe for a later color, I don't know what I'll use for my second color, maybe black. Okay, here's my blue. I'm going to grab a paintbrush that has um, wider bristles. So many of these paintbrushes are just garbage. I haven't been taken care of. So here's my end gobe. Um, it's a little on the thick side. I'm gonna add a little bit of water to it just so it flows better. And then I'm just going to lightly paint one layer. One layer is all it's gonna take over that surface. If I wanna blend other colors in here and create a fade between colors, that's fine. I only have one color that I brought over here, so I'm not gonna, um, do anything fancy with my painting, just this one color. So at this moment in time, if this was as far as I went and if it was as far as I was going to go, if I peeled this paper off right now, what color would my design be? It'd be the clay color, right, which will fire to be white. And then the surrounding area would be blue. Um, next week, when this is set up a little bit, I'm gonna put more of these paper pieces on. I'm gonna paint over it with a second color so like say if my second color is black and I have my new paper pieces on top of that, I'll have a white design from these original paper pieces. I'll have a light blue design from my second layer of paper pieces and then the rest of the area will be black. That kind of makes sense, that layering situation. So it can be kind of confusing. I'm here to help in any way that I can as you move on to that step today. Um, remember your assignment for today is to photo photograph this, this top view. And then also probably before you get to this step, photograph the bottom. So I can see that you did your foot today too. Then when you're all 100% done, boy, that foot is still really, really, really wet. When you're 100% done, put it on your tray. Do you guys have trays? Yeah. yeah, okay. People at home, you have trays. Stick it in a bag and just let it sit tight in a bag, wrapped up tightly till Monday because we want to keep being able to work with it on Monday. Um, any questions? It's a lot of steps, but people at home, you're able to watch this video to remind you of the steps. Um, people who are here, I'll put the steps up on the screen for you. Now, the only thing that's different is for people who did their project on the wheel, you're gonna be doing your foot in a different way. So you're gonna be um, getting your pot leather hard and hopefully now when you check it over in front of the fan, you'll find that it's leather hard. We're gonna flip this over and I'm gonna show you how to trim a foot on the wheel, okay? So the, for those five people who were on a wheel yesterday, I'll be helping you out with the foot step. Okay, that's it. Let's go to it, folks. Thank you for your patience. Oh. It should be a pretty active day. All right, people who are at home, hang tight just a second. All right, Blue, do you have a question?